Today, we're talking with Lauren Seiden, the founder of New You Development. She's amassed amazing techniques and tools to help guide us to become more self-aware of our blocks, emotions, and feelings, uh, allowing us to more easily release that which, which no longer serves us. She combines practical, scientifically proven coaching methods that work. So stay tuned to hear some of these impactful techniques and don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Hope you enjoy it. So physically, emotionally, energetically, and then soulfully, which is how clear are you on your path and your purpose in each of these centers? How secure and grounded, so regardless of where you live or money in the bank or relationship that you're having, how clear are you at your root? How clear are you in your creative and what you're in your purpose and your body and your being and your vitality and your sensuality and your second? You know, how clear are you in your identity and what you're here for? And then that's that place of self-worth where you're in your highest values and your third, right? How clear are you that you're always supported regardless and there's no one ever missing and we don't ever need anything in our fourth? Or that, oh, I always say what I need to say and the times I forget it, how can I actually remind myself? So we do this at each, at each level. You will have a result. You will shift your blood chemistry. You will release things. You will clear out that subconscious and you will have a different experience of your life. So many of these tools that you use to uh, release patterns in the body, um, is that kind of based around energetics? Do you often focus on like the body's chakras to, uh, to help with, with the shifts? Well, as you're talking about chakras, you know, that's what was inspiring to me. I started integrating more chakra work. I went through a Kundalini yoga training and I started integrating and paying more attention to the fact that we have these energy centers. And once I learned their meanings that, huh, interesting, if this part of me actually feels something different than maybe my heart feels that different from what my root might be feeling. And we have different doubts and different fears and different things that show up in each of these energy centers. It's almost like we've got seven different people inside of us. And so when I started playing with that, I realized that integration was so important. And that while we might not mentally think we have a block, if we're not getting the result we're saying we want, then there's something going on and the chakras are a great first place to look. Hmm. So I started doing this with myself and then with clients and I realized that it worked every single time that it was really fascinating and oftentimes unconscious what would happen and what would show, oh my gosh, I didn't realize that chakra was feeling that way and having that doubt or whatever it is. Right. And right. once we can be aware, become aware of it, then we can start to acknowledge it, accept it, and shift it. So that's why I created the journey through the chakras and really now dedicate so much time and use lots of different things and integrate it into this chakra work so that we can become more connected, like you're saying, and feel different throughout the day. It really makes a huge difference. I mean, it really, uh, for me, I mean, I, I can usually feel things shift. And I have my exercises that I that I do. And Sometimes I'm okay with it, but I have a lot of friends that they're just, you know, really, really talented. And they, they're, they're, I should say, they're very practiced in that realm. Yeah. So they do it well and they could do it for other people also, which is, that's a whole other thing, right? But they, uh, they can somehow enter my field and they can help ground me out and help um, clear out my chakras. And however that's done, and I'd love to know that the science or the concept or, or the philosophy or whatever label that you put on. And I'd love to hear about that. Um, if not from you, from, from someone, because it's just so crazy. Cause I, it, it, it's so um, it, it's, it's tangible. Yeah. Like it makes a big difference. And I would like to be, be able to do that for myself every day. We had talked before about uh, blocks and being able to remove blocks through the practice of yoga. Mm -hmm. how does that work exactly so i'll tell you when my first experience with yoga was quite a while ago i was still married i, I remember many times we'd pull up in the yoga, yoga we pull up in the, the uh, yoga studio parking lot we weren't getting along so well and then we'd go into this yoga studio because we promised ourselves that we would do this yoga right and i remember and and she would agree that coming out of the yoga studio every time we were in absolute bliss like things just would resolve themselves in the yoga studio and it wasn't about just getting exercise it wasn't about being in a room full of people like there was something else going on that 
Maybe it was opening up chakras. Maybe it was clearing blocks, but something else was happening that was significant enough that for the rest of the evening, we would just have a wonderful evening. Mm -hmm. And that was very consistent. Every time we, we did yoga, how does that happen? Why is that happening? Yeah. And how, how does yoga remove blocks or help to remove blocks? Well, in a general sense, right? Anything that we give attention and focus to is actually a meditation. So whether that's we're walking out in nature, we're coloring or cooking or doing a practice like yoga, we're giving ourselves time to actually be quiet and move through the things that are showing up. And there's moments where your mind might be going crazy. And then there's moments where it actually slows down because once we bring awareness to something and we give it time to process, then all of a sudden it's not relevant anymore. So when we're with anything fully, oh, now all of a sudden that breath comes in and we're not forcing it and we're not just stuck in the issue and only seeing the box of the problem. Now we're getting outside of it. So I think that that's part of what's going on with what you're saying in the yoga practice, that now you're not just sitting with your wife trying to have a conversation with her all of a sudden, you're both now in your own practice, on your own mat, focused with whatever's going on for you and giving yourself that love and time and attention. And then also there's a very intentional practice with each pose, right? Like you took one of my yoga classes, we do an archer posture and all of a sudden it's like, I am doing this with a focus of what am I creating in my life? And I'm staring at it and we do it with enough time and consistency that all of a sudden everything else drops away and we have enough time to clear through everything. And so then at the end of it, we do our meditation or Shavasana or whatever it might be. And we're actually really then clear. And I'd say yoga practice is all about building up to Shavasana is the yoga practice, but it takes so much for us to get to the place of stillness. So we use all of that to help us what's going on. And it's just another version of processing basically. So whether we use the yoga or the body scanning, we're all trying to get to the same place, same, same, same place. And there's so many different styles of yoga and meditation that we can turn to, which is beautiful. I specifically teach Kundalini yoga, which is known as the yoga of awareness. So really every, everything that we do is very purposeful. Every intention, every you know posture, every breath pattern that we're using, we're using it in a specific pattern and way to help people gain more clarity, release the blocks and yes, clear the chakras. And there's times where we are completely focused on the chakras. And then there's times where that's just an effect of the patterns and the movement that we're doing. Yeah, I will say um, my favorite part of, of yoga is the Shavasana at the end. <laughs> it's like Mind when you. I can just lay back and absorb or uh, chill out from everything that I was doing. Um, yeah, that, that always resonates with me. The very tail end of the yoga. <laughs> We do yoga. Yeah. It's, and it, it's really a self-care practice. I didn't love a lot of the different styles of yoga when I started and and I don't always, but I know that it, I never regret going to a class and it's very right. different. It's not that I don't love doing other sports and everything, but yoga has a very different intention with it. Yes. And we do postures like we're opening up our spine. We're opening up our throat and our heart all of a sudden. Yes, that does translate into having an easier time communicating, feeling more full and validated within yourself, feeling not like you're missing something or lonely. So then all of a sudden now we can have a deeper, more meaningful communication with a partner or with somebody that was challenging beforehand. So the movement completely um, integrates and assists us in whatever it is that we're trying to accomplish. I think we talked a little bit about this. I, I don't have so much written down. I mean, this is all energy work in a sense, but but energy work is, is largely what you you do these days, right? And like in, in what other capacities do you do energy work? Or is it yeah. generally focused so around yoga or? Yeah. It is not generally focused around yoga. I love Kundalini yoga so much and it's like a great part of the practice and it's something I do here and there, but it's definitely not the majority of what I do. The majority of what I do is online cor uh, courses and one-on-one -on -one coaching. And with both of those, I integrate coaching, practical elements to coaching and typical you know, elements that you might see with coaching. And then I go a little bit deeper into more of a therapeutic realm. And I integrate a lot of the energy work, body scanning conversations and integrate the uh, Demartini method and Dr. Demartini's values work with a lot of what I do, which has been one of the things I think that has allowed me, it's almost similar to the Kundalini, but I think it's what's been allowing me to have such an impact and be able to do so much more with myself and my clients when I started integrating his work. So okay. I really appreciate the spiritual and the practical that comes from that practice, but both are about helping us own ourselves and get to really be present more to 
our highest self in that space of inspiration. And we integrate our energy into everything that we do. So when we don't have bandwidth for something or we feel tired or, oh, it's because I didn't get enough sleep last night. But that's actually never the reason. It's that, oh, I'm not actually living and being present to my highest values. There's a place where I'm not fully conscious right now. Oh, interesting. Let me tune back into those. So yes, it's all about energy in a, in a sense, for sure. And then traditional sense of energy work where I might tune in and say, oh, there's something going on that I can see behind your back or I can see that, you know, and sometimes I get visuals and sometimes I just sense something and then I'll help people check in so I can do that type of energy work. I can clear it for them, but I often love helping them instead guide their body scanning. And then maybe we would take a two or three hour even session what we just did, but we would just expand it on what chakra and who came up and then integrate the Demartini method and integrate different things so that you're becoming the fullest version of yourself and owning all your traits. And what someone has just said to me the other day, which I actually really liked, she was like, you know, she's like, you're like the consciousness upgrade coach. I feel like I get an upgrade in my consciousness when I come to you because you help me integrate what's unconscious and where to focus and then what to let go of and how to really let go of it in the most loving way. So that's what's possible, I think, when we use our energy as a feedback system. Oh, I don't yeah, know. Like rather than like a negative or positive, it's like, let it be. Oh, that's interesting. I don't really have the energy right now, but that's actually showing me places where I'm just not living completely fully right now in my most authentic self. You mentioned something about body scanning. Hmm. What is that? So that's a part of what we just did with the chakras, where we just okay. get curious. Just kind of sensing. Oh, what's and, and... going on in my body in different places. And oh, I can feel something going on in my elbow. And then, you know, when we do it, we can do it in so many different ways, but that's what's allowed me to, oh, I didn't realize I was holding on to something in here and the fear there. And so I believe and have studied that each part of our body is showing us a place where we're either unconscious or we haven't yet brought it to our awareness, or it's even somewhat conscious, but we're just overriding it and moving through our day and that's our right. life and we're not processing it. And so, so it's every just about being aware of the yeah. sensations in your body. Yep, sensations. I, I had gotten cold, the doubts, all of it. Um, is that do you do scan, body scanning on other people? Uh huh. And how does that work? So anyone that you are connected with, or you can see in your space, and if they give you permission, you can feel into. That's just a t something we practice. But we all have the capacity mm -hmm. to do that. Now, does that kind of fall under the intuition <laughs> umbrella? Personally, I would say, no, I think it tunes in more of like, I have a separation. I see you over there and you're allowing me to see something within you. And I'm only also seeing it because I have it. We all have the same traits within ourselves. So the more open and full we are with ourselves, the more we get to see with other people. Okay. So I would say okay. that, that it is in, in part of intuition that we're getting it, but it's also more about the, the presence and the connection and the desire. Gotcha. Yeah, like asking the questions and being wanting to actually see what's over there, wanting to see what's going on for somebody. Because right. um, we make it an intuitive like, oh yeah, that's what's going on, but it's very different if we're presencing it and giving our full undivided attention and focus and energy to that. To me, that's what energy work is when you have, you know, a practitioner and somebody doing that. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I have um, um, s some friends of mine. I mean, they, they when they refer to scanning, um, like they can scan other people. Um, they can kind of, in a way, do it visually. Some of them have that yeah. sense, height, heightened sense. Um, some of them just kind of know. Um, others, it's like almost a, a sense of a virtual feel, like they can... Um, and, and they will feel a, a particular sensation and then go deeper with it. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, I just kind of, I find that kind of fascinating. One person to being able to uh, focus in on a feeling or sensation in someone else's body, being able to um, share the, the energetic field of someone else or being able yeah. to dive into someone else's energetic field. So one of the things I love about intuition, which I think often gets misunderstood, is people just have this overwhelming sense of follow your intuition, right? Listen to that gut instinct that you have. And actually, this is a take from Dr. John Martini. that's not, I didn't come up with this at first, but it made so much common sense to me that this is what I've integrated now and follow. And I really 
think that it's shifted like who I got to be as a being. It up leveled me and my clients when we understood it because it allowed us to go deeper in an area. Okay. And I truly believe that when we get an intuition, it's something that comes, it's a little bit clouded. It's not a, it's a, it's a feeling or it's an emotion or it's a sensation or a thought. And he calls it, it's a half truth. It's one-sided. So we don't want to necessarily go full steam ahead following a one-sided view. So let's say you're having a challenge with person and you get this, what you call an intuitive knowing, stay away from them or they're all one way, right? That's what sometimes people think of as an intuition. Okay. And I don't think that's an intuitive, that's intuitive, but it's not saying go follow that because it's never true that it's all or nothing or that they're all one way or not. What is true, however, is, oh, I'm having a perception or potentially a fantasy or looking up to this person. And now I'm getting this nightmare that maybe they're the other way or that I need to avoid them. And rather, if I were to look within myself and see, oh, yeah, sometimes I'm that, sometimes I'm this way, like they're this and that, like we're all both sides. Now I have more permission for them and for me. And then we can tune in after that. We clear the intuition and intuition is that half truth of what's unconscious. And it's okay. trying to help us stay away from having either where we think everything should be incredible and all one-sided and all blissful, or where we get fearful and we get scared and we think, oh my God, I have to avoid that. And that's really the amygdala. That's really that part of us that's animal nature that's saying, I only want pleasure and I want to avoid pain. And the spiritual essence of ourselves is actually the part of us that connects to our knowing is willing to embrace pains and pleasures to the same degree to go after something inspiring. And so we get a knowing above that, which is, it doesn't mean that person has to be our best friend or that date we went on or wherever it's coming in from, or even if it's with a parent or if it's, you know, or if we think someone's so bad and then all of a sudden we might have this like dream state and seeing them as the superhero. We're like, that's interesting, but it's always trying to help us balance and show us the other side. So intuition is actually just trying to help you become more full within yourself. And once you then become more full, we have to build up to, we have to open the chakras and build up to the place where we get access to that information, where we're hearing it more. And then once we do that, then all of a sudden we access what's at the crown, which is that bridge between the physical and spiritual body. And from that place, I like to call that knowing. That comes in with like, I don't know how to explain how this feels. This is just like a yes for me and an inspired yes. Okay. It makes sense um, to me. And if it's like, that's a no, then my inspired yes is the, then what I'm a yes to, not the no. Like everything just comes in with such clarity of what to focus on. And to me, that level of knowing only comes when we've integrated enough of our intuition. And the intuition basically is coming from what I like to call the subconscious backpack. So everything, since we're, whether you believe in the womb or not, but everything throughout our life, we have experiences or you know, significant emotional events or things that have happened. And if we're not in a place of full integration around them, we have a part of it that's conscious and a part of it that's unconscious. And anything that we have an emotion around or we're highly polarized around, whether it's positive or negative. Okay. So whether we think that was the best experience of my life or on some scale of that above neutral, or we think it was the worst experience of my life or some scale in that from neutral, then all of a sudden those experiences aren't full awareness, aren't they're not stored in our memory as full awareness. There's something we're conscious hmm. of because the truth is every event is neutral. Okay. Right. So that way, what happened is we store those on those things that are not completely um, integrated yet. We take what's unconscious and we put it in our subconscious and we store it. And the more stuff that gets stored in our subconscious as we get older, the kind of heavier the load gets, the heavier that backpack gets. And right. the more reactive we tend to become. And then the more we, the less access we have to our intuition because the more in our amygdala we are. And when we start mm. to use yoga or meditation and we start to clear all this stuff out, then all of a sudden we get more and more access because the subconscious, it's like releases something into the intuition. And all of a sudden we, oh, let's integrate that. Let's integrate that. Oh, that showed up. And then all of a sudden we get to graceful and like dance with those issues that are showing up and clearing them. And then we get to be more in gratitude for what is as it is on both sides without thinking something needs to be a certain way on either side of the scale. So it's not that I am just like this belief. I don't, I'm not a believer in the positivity and I'm not a believer that the supposed negative was bad either. They're both just inaccurate perceptions that aren't fully cleared. And when they're fully cleared, it's like, wow, I'm grateful for that experience and I feel love and inspiration and that's it. And I'm just certain I was right on my path. 
And anything other than that, any of the emotional noise other than that is just showing us there's something yet to be cleared. That is so interesting. That, that makes sense though. Yeah. It just started helping me go deeper and understand it versus like so reactive because that's exactly what it's supposed to be. Reactive mm -hmm. when we're in that zone. Yeah. And we want to transcend that to the best of our ability so that we can be more able to respond so that we can be more present spiritually so that we can be more connected. Like you're saying, well, how do I have these experiences with people? Well, it's the more stuff we're able to see within ourselves and the more we expand who we are on both sides and realize that everything serves. And I guess a lot of these exercises that you would do to kind of clear yourself, um, like it probably would be a good idea to do it first thing in the morning to kind of get your stay, your day started on the right foot. Yeah. Right side of the so bed. I end my day like that and I start my day like that. Oh, is that right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, good for you. Yeah. I end my day with a nice body scan and just seeing what's present and what's gone on throughout the day. And I do that. And if I do like a Kundalini meditation, that'll probably be early, late evening, not super late. And then before I go to bed is when I'll do more of like a longer body scan, unless I'm doing work. And then what I'll do is I'll do a little Kundalini meditation, do a body scanning with the intention of fueling whatever, whatever work I'm about to do. So it's not so much for me right now, but it's like, oh, who's in my space? What do I love to do? What am I creating for people? Oh, I have this workshop tomorrow. And so we can bring an intention to what we're doing. And then when I check in again at night, it's, oh, now what's present? So that's why I'm saying we get to use it in all these different contexts. And then when we wake up, it might be like today, right? I had this coming on with you. So it was, oh, who's in my space? What's going on? Let me be present to each chakra. Oh, I didn't know that person was here. Let's clear them out. Let's clear this person out. Let's clear some of the doubt up there out. And let's get to our brightest light. And then, you know, really getting to our heart with what we'd love to create. It really, for me, requires great discipline to do something like that every morning and every evening. Um, the mornings that I do different uh, meditative practices, it really makes a big difference. And I would even, you don't necessarily need to, but get to the place where, why would I love to do this? How do I perceive this is actually going to help me in my life and in my day? Hmm. You know, so because anything we have a need on, we are not that inspired to do. <laughs> or I feel like I should do that. It's even lower. I need to do that. Well, maybe I'll sure. do it here and there, but now we don't feel that good about it. But anything that it's like, wow, I would love to do this today and start my day this way because I start really connecting the dots of how I feel each time I do it. Oh, I'm really a lot more focused in work. If I spend an hour meditating, I can probably get two hours of work done in a half an hour, or I could get two hours of work done in four and a half hours because I'm kind of distracted and it isn't done as hmm. well, right? So I started to think, oh, that hour of meditation is actually the most effective time in my day because not only am I more efficient with work, I'm also processing things. I'm communicating with people better. I'm allowing opportunities and more people to show up and really cool, unique things to happen. And if I'm not in that space, I'm not even... The, I don't even have the possibility potentially of having that or seeing those opportunities when they come and being in a position to say yes to them. Yeah, well, that's definitely like I told you this morning that I had a uh, uh, chakra cleansing this morning and grounding. And my day, this is probably one of the most productive days I've had in a while. Awesome. So I, I see what you're saying that taking the time out to meditate or to clear your chakras or to just... Um, self-care, it's probably the most effective use of time that you could possibly have because everything else just kind of falls into place. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that definitely describes my day today because I started it doing the right things for myself. Good, yeah. So. I either say we either live it or we link it. So we either are already doing it and we're already living it consistently or we've got a link. How is this actually serving me and part of my path? and helping me get more of what I already say that I want. So if anything, you know, for those of you watching, if there's anything in your life that you're thinking, oh, I really would love to have that, if you're not seeing it is on the way and it's something outside of you that you just love to have added in, what are the things that are already inspiring to you? So I don't know for you if it's, you know, if it's your work and what type or if it's these interviews or whatever it might be, but really start to connecting the dots of, well, how could this meditation practice really be something I would love to do that will help make all of that stuff easier? So whatever it is for, you know, those of people watching that it's, we always have to link the things. Otherwise, yes, we don't see a purpose and reason why, or we might have times where it's worked, but we still don't have the consistency. And anything we lack consistency of, it's just feedback. It's not that we're bad people or that something's wrong with us, or we can't do it, or we need more discipline. It's just oh, I just don't have the mindset yet of seeing how it's worth my time. 
And so, oh, interesting. And let it be feedback and let it just be an area of if we really feel that it's worthwhile, then I even say, do a chakra journey, see where and do something. Oh, where do I not perceive that it's actually helpful? Oh, where is there a doubt there? Where is there something showing up? And we can do it with anything that we say we want. We just want to get more curious and then get to the place of where, yeah, it's what I would love to do. Yes, I totally see how it's on the way and helping me achieve whatever it is that I'm doing. Yeah, I see how it's going to help me in my being. And all of a sudden, you don't need the discipline. And then anytime you lack it again and fall off, it's not, oh, it's not working anymore. It's, oh, I just lost the way that I saw it as linked. Let me just do some more of it. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. So as we're talking about boundaries and really owning your own energy, you know, there's four types of boundaries we want to focus on as we do body scanning or we see something. And we first want to look at physically what's going on in your body. How are you taking your care of yourself? How are you feeling when you get to that sensation of that body center? And then we want to look at emotionally when your body scanning is what's showing up. Do I feel off balance? Because again, emotions are just a feedback signal showing you that there's a place of off balance. Because when we're grounded and we're present and we're open-hearted, we're not emotional. We're clear-minded and we're flexible and adaptable. So anything less than that is let it just be interesting and say, oh, there's just something here that needs to be integrated. There's some perception that's off here. And that's, again, part of that intuition of seeing, oh, there's something off. And anytime I'm in that emotional state of being, chaotic state of being, there's something off. And I'm just not being fully authentic. And it's not a bad thing. It's just saying, ah, I can authentically be in that emotion while I simultaneously realize that's not a completely authentic version of my highest self. So I'm going to become aware, willing to see what's there without a judgment of what's there. But I'm also going to hold that perspective and space of a higher order. And that's where we get to balance what's happening. And then energetically, who's in your space? See if you get an answer. See if a person pops in. Sometimes I visually see them. Sometimes I sense them. Sometimes a name I say to myself. You know, it comes in in different forms. Sometimes I visually see them. But knowing that anytime we have people in, different people can show up at different energy centers. Because there might be someone unconsciously that, oh my gosh, I didn't even realize that I was trying to compete with that person or I was looking up to them and devaluing myself. Oh, I didn't realize that person I was still feeling missing and feeling sensitive in my heart, you know, and feeling sad or disappointed in or whatever it might be. Oh, I didn't realize I was not feeling vital and creative and inspired and, you know, there. So it's just interesting. Let it be interesting of who shows up in different places. And then I like to say soulfully. So physically, emotionally, energetically, and then soulfully, which is how clear are you on your path and your purpose in each of these centers? How secure and grounded. So regardless of where you live or money in the bank or relationship that you're having, how clear are you at your root? How clear are you in your creative and what your in your purpose and your body and your being and your vitality and your sensuality and your second? You know, how clear are you in your identity and what you're here for? And then that's that place of self-worth where you're in your highest values and your third, right? How clear are you that you're always supported regardless and there's no one ever missing and we don't ever need anything in our fourth? Or that, oh, I always say what I need to say and the times I forget it, how can I actually remind myself? So we do this at each, at each level. And one of the things I always remind people of, and I love, I don't know where I first heard this, but I heard a version of it from a doctor a long time ago, was if you don't know how to say no, your body will say it with illness. And I always just say, if you don't know how to say no, your body will say it for you. It will figure out a way over time. And the less we listen, the louder that message has to get. And the more in tune we are and the more we hear the subtleties of the intuition, that's trying to balance you to get you on track, which then allows you to be that essence of being. So that's referred to as the four pillars? Um, yeah, you can do that. I, say, I say the four types of boundaries. But you four know. types of boundaries. Yeah. Um, so you're a big Tony Robbins fan, is that right? He's awesome. Like all of my closest friends are from Tony, like from gotcha. those days, which for sure I, I love him and I don't... Um, I, I still love to spend some time. I just have prioritized other yeah. modes of healing. And I think when I started doing more of the mix of Demartini and energy work, I would say I got a little less involved because I also started teaching things that I think we're all trying to get to the same place, not a good or bad. It's just my yeah. values work that I've adapted from Demartini and kind of integrated with a lot of my energy work is very different from his values work in certain things. Yeah. So that's why well, I'm, I'm anxious on, to uh, check out Demartini. Um, he, he sounds... But he's obviously influenced you an awful lot. So we'll have to check. Oh, that yeah. Out. yeah. Yeah. It's funny. I actually have known him since I'm about 10, but I didn't start studying with him until 
I had already done like a decade with Tony and I just wasn't ready for him. You know, I really wasn't mm. ready. It was perfect timing when he came into my life. Um, right. But I was like, how have I known you? And I didn't know what you do. This is amazing. Like he for sure has been one of the, you know, Tony was too at the time, different times, different people. But I would say my adult wow. life. Yeah. John's been such an incredible mentor and mm. person that I love studying and just continue to use his method every single day. And it's the thing nice. that helped me really have the most long-term shifts with my clients, I think, where it really? just okay. things become irrelevant. And, you know, it takes out the guesswork, like coaching can have a lot of, there's an art of coaching. And I think that's still beautiful. And we obviously all, that's why there's no shortage of coaches in the world. And there's no shortage and there's no competition with coaches because we can talk to 10 coaches and all get a different opinion. And that's beautiful. And we don't know which one we'll hear at the right time. And it was always a stacking to that. So there's mm -hmm. no, you know, it's, it's amazing. Um, but I would say that his work brings such a science to it of really, really okay. and I like to integrate that with the energy work because otherwise I can feel for me and my clients and who I am, it's a little mental for me, but uh, right. an integration of it, it's, it's so powerful. There's nothing like it. When you ask that question, you ask it 30 times, you will have a result. You will shift your blood chemistry. You will release things. You will clear out that subconscious and you will have a different experience of your life. You teach a intuition class and like a, a knowing class. Yeah. So I have, um, a journey through the chakras, which is actually a complimentary course that I developed. I've got amazing guest speakers and Dr. John Martini is one of the guest speakers on day three. Oh, wow. Talking about values and intuition and some of these concepts and ego and all these really great things. And I had just this vision once in a Kundalini yoga class that I went to. And that's because it helps you get to that clear knowing. I wanted to put some pieces together. And first I had to go through all that intuition stuff and clear out the subconscious. And then all of a sudden, a few months later, you have access more to the knowing. Um, in which case for me here was this course that I wanted to create. And uh, and that goes through a lot of these concepts. And then I have a deeper dive and I've got a five week course called Reconnect Your Heart and helping you understand what your highest values are, how to clear energetic boundaries, grounding tools, visioning, mm -hmm. lots of different things that we do. It has a grief bonus as well. So learning how to have energetic conversations and presence, anything you perceive to be missing. So whether you physically lost someone or they're no longer in your life or anything that you perceive a lack or missing of, it helps deal with that. So yeah, we gotcha. cover a lot of these spiritual concepts um, and go into great depth there and lots of different courses and one-on-one -on -one work. And then I teach different themed classes, workshops and Kundalini classes at different times that have sometimes grounding as a topic, sometimes energetic boundaries, sometimes intuition, sometimes chakra journey. We just had one in awareness last month. So wow. yeah.